Jordan, President Mohammed Buhari today presided over the Federal Executive Council meeting at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Prior to the commencement of the meeting, he swore in the chairman and commissioners of the newly inaugurated National Assembly Service Commission. President Buhari had, in December last year, forwarded the names of the chairman, Ahmed Amshi, and other members to the National Assembly. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. First to take the oath is the chairman of the National Assembly Service Commission. He is to lead 11 other commissioners drawn from the six geopolitical zones. The commission is a government organization that manages the workforce of the National Assembly. The leadership of the National Assembly has its expectation. We expect uh, that the commission will be uh, very effective and efficient and the time is of essence. So we are expecting them to, to work hard to ensure that they reposition uh, the commission. We also expect them to work with management of the National Assembly seamlessly. I believe they will, uh, uh, they will operate optimally in the interest of the National Assembly, in the interest of the country most importantly. So we're looking forward to a robust uh, National Assembly Service Commission. The new chairman is also clear on the direction of the commission. So our first target is to look at the training requirements of all the staff and of course all the essential management tools that are required to boost their morale. We'll be work, we will work on them. The chairman and the commissioners have a first five-year tenure which is renewable. In the meantime, the issues of staff appointment, promotions, salaries, secondment are some of the issues the Commission will be grappling with, as it is on record that in the past, staff of the National Assembly have had cause to cry out over remunerations and better working environment. From the Presidential Villa, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. Now, after that commissioning, there's the inauguration of the National Assembly Service Commission. The Federal Executive Council approved the award of two road construction contracts in Sokoto and Jigawa, linking the states with Niger Republic's border. This is one of the approvals of the council at its meeting, presided over by the president in Abuja. Also considered a report from the ministries of mines and steel development, as well as that of communications and digital economy. The Minister of Works and Housing said the roads are critical for the growth of the country's economy. Council considered and approved this memorandum on the justification made that it was critical to execute our mandate under the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, our ministerial mandate to improve infrastructure, but also uh, for the um, enablement of uh, business across borders, particularly now that we have uh, taken an affirmative position of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And uh, the markets there in that area of the country do a lot of trade across borders. So this is a good boost for business as well. Let's switch now to some business news. Here's Anne Waldo. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Millicent. Good evening and welcome to business news. Brand screwed futures have fallen below Nigeria's $57. Branch, a benchmark today after hundreds of new coronavirus cases were reported in Asia, Europe and the Middle East. This raised fears that energy demand will drop. The international oil price benchmark fell by 2.7 percent to settle at 53.43 cents a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell 2.3 percent to settle at $48.73 a barrel. Meanwhile, the Organization of Petroleum Exports countries says that it will hold its first meeting for 2020 and that will happen next week on March the 5th and the 6th despite reports of suspected cases of infection near its headquarters in Vienna. 
Industrial giant Dangote Cement has reported a slightly dismal performance in its group earnings report as of December the 31st last year. According to its financial statement sent to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the group's revenue came in lower at 891.67 billion naira, and that's when you compare it to 901.2 billion naira, which was reported in the same period in 2018. The group's gross profit slowed slightly to 511.6 billion naira from 517.9 billion naira. Pre-tax profit was trimmer at 250.4 billion naira, while after-tax profit came in at 200 billion naira, as against 390 billion naira, which was recorded one year ago. Meanwhile, the company has proposed 16 naira per share to its shareholders as cash dividend for the financial year. Network infrastructure provider IHS Towers says that it is working towards an initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange and that could give it a $7 billion valuation. The Mauritius-based wireless towers operator has engaged American investment bank Citigroup Incorporated and JP Morgan Chase as global coordinators for the IPO, which is expected to be the biggest by an African company in the United States. IHS, which has operated Operations in Nigeria, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Zambia, and Rwanda is the largest mobile telecommunications infrastructure provider in Africa, Europe, and the Middle East by tower count, and the third largest independent multinational tower company globally. South Africa's budget deficit is projected to widen to an 18-year high next fiscal year on the back of slump in economic growth and power cuts. According to the Treasury's 2020 spending plan presented by Finance Minister to the Parliament, the budget deficit is likely to reach 6.8% of its gross domestic product in this year and in 2021, which begins in April compared to the previous estimate of 6.5%. Meanwhile, the country's GDP is expected to grow at 0.9% this year, 1.3% in 2021 and 1.6% in 2022. Uh, let's come down here. Nigeria, the NSE's main index, has fallen to a new low at the close of trades day. Sell pressure from the NSE's second most capitalized stock has kicked off 31 billion naira from the total value of listed equities today. Ekaite Afia has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The persistent bearish sentiments at the local boards continued into midweek trading, no thanks, to the 3.45% loss from MTN Nigeria, which dragged the Alter Index down to a new low of 26,000. 974.38. Gains recorded by the industrial goods, banking, and consumer goods sectors did not have much impact on the overall index, while the insurance counter closed negative and oil and gas remains unchanged. Overall volume and value and deals traded today were lower compared to Tuesday's session as 228.37 million shares worth 2.7 billion Naira changed hands in more than 3,800 deals. Tier 1 lenders UBA, Zenith, and Access Bank were highest on the trades list, accounting for more than 60% of total volume traded. Honeywell Flower is the highest gainer for the day, up by 9.38%, while Vitafoam lost the most, down by 9.98%. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Akaita Afia. Thank you, Akaite. The impact of the coronavirus is still maintaining a very strong grip on global markets around the world, particularly stocks in Asia, as investors are withdrawing over fears of concerns of the continued spread of the virus. Let's see the numbers for today. Thanks for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Millicent.
banking. So easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Now it's been four weeks since the Lagos state government imposed restrictions on motorcycles and auto rickshaws in some parts of the state. Now, there have been mixed reactions since the announcement was made, but the state government says there's no going back. In this next report, our correspondent, Dare Ido, he examines how the policy is playing out and some of its attendant impact. Lagos, Nigeria Commercial Hub and City of Resolute Traffic Congestion. With more than 8 million people traveling to work daily, plying over 9,000 road networks in the state, one site hard to ignore is the everyday struggle of stranded passengers who find it difficult to get to their destinations. Many argue that the public transit options are limited and the current infrastructure in place does not support the increasing number of commuters. One reason why motorcycles and tricycles business boomed. They reign supreme on this road, getting passengers to their destinations as fast as possible. But the state government believes these means of transportation are creating more nightmares and chaos and not befitting of a smart city. There's a reason behind the restriction. It's because the government loves you. Don't kill yourself. Okada will kill you. So why are you patronizing them? So whether they come out or not, if there is no demand, there can be supply. So really, we should be directing our message to the people who are still patronizing the Okada to violate the rules. In January, the Lagos State Government made an announcement that starting from February 1st, motorcycles and tricycles will stop plying some routes in the state. That decision generated a lot of reactions with those disapproving, saying that the state government should have made a proper provision for an alternative before imposing the ban. A month down the line, how are the residents coping? It's been hell. You know, you know um, see, under this kind of um, weather, we are already sweating in the morning. You don't even know what time, what time you will get to the place you're going. Um, so many, especially when you, um, for example now, this is a road under construction. I believe that maybe once these road matters have been tackled, those things can now be banned. But now we, they ban it, there is hold up, there is no, no, there is no, we are, we are stressed in Lagos, let's just tell ourselves the truth. Almost everybody is frustrated. Um, I believe everywhere is calm, um, everywhere is good, I believe the ban should go on. Hundreds of people living with disabilities from across the state added their voice to those protesting the ban. They say their livelihood and mobility have been decimated, insisting on sitting in at the government house until they get the attention of the governor. As the state government continues to work on providing more buses and ferries to show up gaps in the state transportation system, opinion is still divided on how well this will make up for the gap created by the ban on motorcycles and tricycles. Dari Ido, Chinese Television News. A Chinese national is currently being observed for the novel coronavirus in Lagos. The adult male is said to have returned from China January 2020, but checked into a private hospital in Ikeja today on account of ill health. According to the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Ministry of Health, Dr. Lushegun Ogboye, uh, blood samples of the patient have been taken and tests for coronavirus are being carried out. The results are being expected between tomorrow or Friday, while the patient is set to have been moved to the mainland hospital, Yaba, where there is an isolation facility commissioned by the federal government. Still ahead on the news at 10, World Health Organization confirms new coronavirus is spreading more rapidly outside China. We have more international news and around the world in five. Plus, five-time Grand Slam winner Maria Sharapova retires from tennis. That's on Sports News. Please stay with us. <laughs>